Hi, right, hey, friends. Welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we're going to be talking about the wild and wilderness in the ancient world. What did people think about it? How did they use it, abuse it, etc.? My major source for this video is a book entitled Pan's Travail, Environmental Problems of the Ancient Greeks and Romans, and the author is J. Donald Hughes. Absolutely check that out if you're interested in learning more. If you come upon a grove of old trees that have lifted up their crowns above the common height and shut out the light of the sky by the darkness of their interlacing boughs, you feel that there is a spirit in the place. So lofty is the wood, so lone the spot, so wondrous the thick unbroken shade. So that was a beautiful quote from Seneca about trees and forests and how beautiful they are, and it really well communicates the general religious respect that most Romans and Greeks have for wild places. They definitely put them in a separate category from more human places, so cities where there's construction and bustle and a large human population are definitely separate from mountains and forests where there aren't so many people around. And those wild places, those mountains and those forests are generally considered to be sacred. Not only are they separate from humans, but they are closer to the gods. And I have another quote from Pliny that reinforces that idea. Trees were the first temples of the gods, and even now simple country people dedicate a tree of exceptional height to a god with a ritual of olden times, and we worship forests and the very silences they contain. So from both of those quotes, I think you get a really good sense of the reverence that most Greeks and Romans had for wild places, but I by no means mean to imply that this reverence was limitless. It definitely wasn't. Both of these civilizations were very interested in commerce and empire, and you need a lot of resources for that. So they had no problem destroying forests or having huge mines that tore open mountains. They needed those resources, and so they did not hold back from extracting them. And that actually is the main focus of Hugh's book. But what I want to focus on in this video is actually the places that they managed to maintain that reverence. So the places that they tried to keep wild, even as they were extracting resources from other areas, uh, they tried to keep these places wild, at least to some extent. Trees and mountains are the two main things that we're going to be focusing on for the rest of this video because there were a ton of sacred groves and mountains all across the ancient world. And because they were sacred, they were considered special to the gods. There were a lot of rules and regulations and restrictions around who could go in and how you could behave in these spaces. And like everything else that we talk about on this channel, it varied a ton depending on when and where you're looking at. So for example, some sacred groves might ban grazing of animals in that area altogether. No animals allowed. But then other sacred groves, usually those that are kind of closer to cities or to towns, they might allow a little bit of grazing, or maybe it's technically forbidden, but there's just a small fine or just a small sacrifice that you have to make in order to apologize to the god for using their land. So there's a bit more of a gray area there. And then another sacred grove that is actually inside of a city is probably not a very wild space anymore. It's more just a green space. So there will be trees and there's probably a temple or an altar or something there, but there are also so plenty of other public buildings and works. People have public meetings and celebrations and things there. There are people in and out all of the time. And so it's, again, not a very wild place anymore. And it's less like a national park and more like just a park. So I am going to give you a list of examples of some of the more wild sacred places that we know about in the ancient world. And for some of these, we know interesting facts or rules about these places. So I'll be including those as well. I'm going to start off with a special peak in Arcadia, which is a region of Greece. We have a passage from Pausanias that tells us that this particular mountain was considered sacred to Pan. And in honor of Pan, tortoises were given special protection on this mountain. The men of the mountain fear to catch them and will not allow strangers to do so either, for they hold that they are sacred to Pan. 
Next up, we have the Sacred Grove of Daphne. So it was apparently about 10 miles in circumference, which is a pretty good chunk of land, not just some little corner park in Rome. And it is, as I said, a grove for Daphne or Artemis, who is a goddess of the wild and of forests and of wild animals. So while they did definitely build some stuff on this land, there was a temple to her and some baths and some other things. They definitely made an effort to keep some trees and some woods around in honor of her. We also have Chrysa, which apparently was a sacred grove for the god Asclepius, who is the god of healing, and it was near his major city, I suppose, Epidaurus. Epidaurus was famous in the ancient world for a big temple to Asclepius, and people would come from all over the ancient world to pray to this god and ask for help with different ailments that they might be suffering from. And I've read some articles that say that if you're around green space, it can help you feel Feel better and it can help you recover from all kinds of things more quickly and obviously I'm not a doctor so I'm not saying anything definitive here but I do think it is an interesting factoid that there were these sacred groves right outside of this healing center. The Acropolis in Athens was not necessarily a wild area or a sacred grove but there were trees around the temple and there were owls that apparently lived on the Acropolis and there was a rule that forbade anyone from hunting or killing any of these owls since owls are the sacred animal to Athena. So that makes a lot of sense. Apparently there were also some sacred apple trees in Lesbos for Aphrodite. So Lesbos is a particularly special area for Aphrodite and apples are a particularly <laughs> significant or special symbol also of Aphrodite for various reasons. One, when she was in the beauty contest with Hera and Athena Athena, Paris ended up giving her, Aphrodite, the apple as the trophy, right, the sign that she had won, that she was the fairest of them all. So that associates her with apples. And also it was a practice in the ancient world to give your sweetheart an apple. Instead of say chocolates or something, you would give them an apple to show them that you were interested in them. And so it got associated with her for that reason or because it was associated with her, it was used for that reason. I don't know the history of it, but apples are an Aphrodite thing and I'm sure that those apple trees were treated with the utmost respect. We also have fish that apparently were sacred to Hermes. These were in Farai and they were off limits. And also eels. Apparently there were some eels that were sacred to Artemis. These were in the spring of Arethusa and they were also off limits. We also have Mount Lycaeus, which apparently was sacred to Zeus. And there was no hunting of any kind, no animals. <laughs> you couldn't kill anything within the zone that was sacred to Zeus. And even if you were outside of that zone and you were hunting something and it ran into the zone, you couldn't follow it, you couldn't kill it. It was just completely off limits. And it was said that if you violated that rule, if you went in there and you killed something, that you would drop dead <laughs> within the year that Zeus would strike you down. Finally, speaking of punishment for violating these sacred places, we're going to talk about the myth of Acteon. Now, you may or may not have heard this myth. I'm going to give you a quick summary. The version you've probably heard, if you've heard of this myth, is that Acteon was out hunting and he stumbled across on accident Artemis naked and having a bath. And Artemis was really pissed about this because she is very protective of her virginity. And so she curses Acteon to turn into a deer and as he's running through the woods his own hunting dogs basically kill him and eat him alive so it's a very gruesome tragic story but we have another version of this myth that is potentially even older that is a little bit different so in this version Acteon doesn't actually see Artemis naked he's just out in her sacred grove hunting where he probably shouldn't be you shouldn't be killing things in Artemis's sacred grove and not only does he kill a stag but he boasts about it he says oh I'm the greatest hunter ever maybe I'm even greater than Artemis and you never want to do that because she then curses him and uh, the myth ends the same way he's eaten alive but the reason for the punishment is different and so from that myth you do get the idea that even though the Greeks and Romans didn't always respect wild places in practice, right? They needed wood and minerals and all those things. In theory, at least, they had a very healthy respect and fear and reverence and all of that good stuff for wild spaces. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members. And I hope to see all of you again next week. Karate.